So stress and anxiety affects us all in many different ways. And it's not just something we battle in our minds, it's something that we physically carry in our bodies. And I bet you didn't know that stress and anxiety can affect your eyes and affect the way that you see. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you five ways stress can cause eye health and vision problems that I bet you didn't know about. Let's take a look. Eyes and shine there, my friends. This is Dr. Joseph Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show, helping you learn everything about the eyes and helping you see your very best. If you're new here to the channel and you like learning about the eyes, hit that subscribe button for us so you don't miss any of our future videos. Now, number one on our list of ways stress can affect your eyes would be with eyelid twitches. This is something that is very, very common, especially for people dealing with chronic stress. And I would say is probably uh, the number one thing I see in like college age students, anybody going through college or a graduate degree. In fact, it's even written in textbooks that most medical students will experience this at least once during their education. An eyelid twitch is also medically known as an eyelid myokymia. And this is where usually the outer side of your eyelid begins to flutter very quickly under no control by you. It just seems to to happen randomly uh, throughout the day and it can be very annoying. But an eyelid twitch is definitely something that is strongly associated with people who are under extreme amounts of stress and I think it happens more with students these days because a lot of people are in front of a computer screen not really blinking very often just kind of staring it down and then because they're under so much stress they're holding their muscles very tight. You know how some people can have really tight shoulders and back muscles when they're under a lot of stress? Well a lot of people carry that stress in their face too and so if they're tightening their face, then that triggers the muscles to kind of flutter and kind of make that little eyelid twitch. I can even remember a time in undergrad when I had this and I had no idea what was going on. And when my doctor said it was because I was too stressed out, I thought, I'm not stressed, I'm, I'm doing perfectly fine. And then I started journaling and making a list of everything I was trying to control and hold on to in my life. And I realized very quickly, Oh no, I was stressed out. The best ways to help relieve an eyelid twitch is of course, try to reduce your stress, get good sleep, and reduce your caffeine intake. There is also this old wives tale about drinking tonic water to help with eyelid twitches. The whole idea is because there's an ingredient called quinine, which is often found in tonic water to give it kind of a bitter taste. Uh, and there's some relationship to quinine as a muscle relaxant. However, in more recent studies that I've read, the amount of tonic water you'd have to drink is potentially like dangerous so uh, most doctors I've never seen like a true medical evidence to support that but however the placebo effect is very strong and if you're gonna start taking tonic water to help with anything uh, ask your doctor first number two is that of reduced or blurred vision yes it's true that having high levels of anxiety and stress can physically change your eye and cause you blurred vision specifically I'm talking about a condition called central serous chorioretinopathy. Central serous retinopathy, or CSR for short, is a condition where the retina in the back of the eye basically kind of forms a blister filled with serous fluid that lifts up the retina and changes your eyesight and usually make things very blurry. Some people report things as seeing kind of magnified or minified or kind of wavy in different parts. But the easiest way to describe it is you have a blister forming in the back of your eye due to stress. This is a condition we usually see in males between the ages of 20 to 50. They're usually very high strung A-type personality individuals, people who need to be in control and are very competitive. The exact cause of central serous retinopathy is not fully understood at this time, but there is a relationship to cortisol levels. People who do tend to get CSR tend to have higher levels of endogenous cortisol compared to age matched controls. And this does kind of make sense is that if you have somebody who's an A-type personality, they have higher stress levels that causes increased levels of cortisol to be released. And then there's like this breakdown and fluid starts pumping into the retina. We also see cases of CSR get worse when patients are treated with exogenous forms of cortisol, whether that be an injection, cutaneous administration, or even through nasal sprays. So definitely, if you're feeling stressed and you notice your vision is changing in either one eye, both eyes, you feel like something's getting wavy in your vision, anything changing at all, definitely see your doctor so they can look deeper into it and make sure everything's okay. But don't be surprised in that case if your doctor says it's related to your stress levels or maybe taking any form of cortisol or steroids. Number three is that of functional vision loss. Now this is a kind of a bit of a mystery. There are different types of functional vision loss but the specific one I'm talking about has an older term for it called hysterical amblyopia. And that's something that a lot of people don't really use anymore, but 
In this case, this is where somebody has so much anxiety, so much stress, they come in to see us at the eye clinic and they'll be telling us they cannot see anything, that their vision is horrible. And we'll test their vision in the clinic. And yes, their vision will be significantly reduced and their vision will be like 2400, uh, maybe worse than that. But we can't detect anything wrong with their eye. The eyeball seems perfectly fine. And when we even do a refraction and look inside the eye, uh, we still don't see much need for glasses power at all. But however, in these cases, uh, we already can tell that these individuals are usually very stressed or under high anxiety, or they're acting a little strange. And more often than not, we'll do some kind of cool tricks here in the eye clinic. We'll put either a lens in front of their eye, like we're gonna show them their glasses prescription, but the lens that we're showing them is in fact zero power, or sometimes there's no lenses in the machine at all in the phoropter that goes over your eyes, there'll be no lenses in there. It'll just be looking through air. But we'll tell the patient that, okay, these are going to be your glasses, and they'll start reading the 2020 line. Again, they just went from seeing like 2400, they are almost legally blind, to now uh, they can suddenly see 2020 in just nothing. Again, it's almost like a mental trick. There's like something going on with their anxiety. They feel like they something's going on with their eyes. What I think is even a better example of this, and I've had this happen a couple of different times, but one case I remember is a patient who was very distraught. She was clearly under a lot of emotional stress and pain. And with my patients, I do like to at least get to know them a little bit on a personal level. And so I said like, you know, hey, um, it is, you're coming across like something's going on. What, what's going on in life? You know, and I just asked her to tell me more of her story. And uh, she broke down. She was going through a really tough divorce. And uh, it was just a tough time for her. And we sat there and I had to kind of switch to my therapist hat. And again, I'm not a trained therapist, but in schooling, you do go through abnormal psychology and general psychology. And I at least just sat there as even as a friend just to listen to her. And after her breaking down and crying for like 20, 30 minutes, uh, we finally were able to, she was able to collect herself. She felt a lot better. And then I showed her, her just, you know, okay, let's put your glasses back on. I'm gonna have you read the chart one more time. And suddenly she read 2020 and I hadn't changed anything. So again, it just goes to show how powerful our brain is over your eyesight and your visual perception and how much stress and anxiety can affect that. Number four is that high stress may even cause glaucoma. More recent studies published on glaucoma have been looking at our stress levels and how they affect both our blood perfusion or blood flow to the eye, along with eye pressure both of which can influence glaucoma development. In fact, in a previous video on this channel, I talked about natural ways to reduce eye pressure, where I went over one of the 2019 studies looking at meditation and its positive effects on lowering stress levels and specifically lowering the eye pressure. And in that study, they were able to reduce the eye pressure by about 20%, which is pretty significant. And then now in a more recent study, they're able to show that by reducing stress levels, they're able to improve the ocular perfusion or improve the blood flow to the eye. And this could even have further implications for other health issues or diseases down the road. And so while you may not realize it, if you're somebody who deals with chronic stress, you could be in fact causing increased risk for other blindness issues later in your lifetime. And number five is that anxiety can even make your eye and vision symptoms worse. Specifically, I'm thinking more for individuals who suffer from things like eye floaters or dry eye. We know that anxiety and stress can increase your risk for things like depression, but there is this common theme in eye care for a lot of people that have symptoms, especially visual symptoms that are a little bit annoying, kind of like you see floaters floating around in your vision back and forth. And if you see a doctor, they may tell you, hey, everything's fine, don't really worry about it. The floaters may always be there, but it's something you'll get used to. It's not really a, a bad thing. You're still seeing 2020. That's an example. But a lot of people will still suffer from eye floaters uh, or perhaps dry eye, and it becomes kind of a chicken or the egg thing. You kind of question, was it the floaters that caused the anxiety, or is it the anxiety that's making the floaters seem worse than they really are? This is in fact something I've discussed with some of my retinal specialists about because they're usually the ones who are seeing people who want to have surgery to remove their floaters, and they happen to turn a lot of people away because 
the floaters really aren't that bad or they don't match up with what the symptoms of the patient has. And it's not to like diminish the symptoms that pa what the patient's having and experiencing. It's the fact that they're more worried that their anxiety is causing more of the vision problems. And I think there just lies a harsh truth that a lot of us suffer from stress and anxiety chronically. And probably most of us don't talk with a therapist or a trained professional in some form. Uh, I know a lot of my friends, they'll say, oh, you know, I have my family and friends to talk to. I don't need to see a therapist. But it's like, no, uh, a trained professional is going to talk to you and push you and dig deeper in different ways, uh, more so than just talking with your friends and family. So if you're somebody who is having some symptom with your eye for a long time and you're just really frustrated by it, uh, definitely talk with your eye doctor first to make sure everything's normal and that everything's doing, that they're doing the best they can for you. But but then also think, hey, am I just stressed out? Am I hyper fixated on something? Maybe you could reach out and get professional help, therapy or something. But I know even myself have become hyper fixated on like a pain in my knee or in my body somewhere before. And as soon as I can relax and stop thinking about it, it gets better. All right, for the last part of this video, I just wanna share a couple of quick tips of things that have helped me deal with my own stress and anxiety. First, let me know in the comment section which part of this video you thought was most interesting or kind of just your favorite part overall. The channel has thankfully been growing a lot over the last few years, but I do spend a lot of time in the comment section and I take all of your comments and questions very seriously. Thank you. My first stress reducing tip is just to take deep, slow breaths. I think this works best, uh, especially when you're in an acute stressful situation. For me, when I was in my residency, I would have to see a patient with some sort of medical disease or emergency, and I would have to think quickly, and it's a very stressful situation, and I was having problems with that. Even my advisors had told me, hey, take a pause, take a few deep breaths. It's gonna help you think better. So that's something you can try. My second tip that kind of goes along with that is taking a break and even more so than just taking a break from whatever activity you're doing, but to give yourself permission to take a break. For myself, uh, I will take breaks, so I'll try to relax on the weekend, but if I don't give myself mental permission to relax, I can't do it. I kind of have to, I, I have this problem of holding myself in too high a regard, like I need to, like other people can take a break and relax, but I can't, but no. I have to give myself permission to relax. I'm taking that time off, I'm not working. Uh, that, that seems to help me more, so maybe that'll help some people. Number three would be meditation. I think meditation is fantastic. Certainly in the research it's been shown good things. Uh, I think it's difficult for a lot of people to jump into it if you've never done it or tried it before. I think taking yoga helped me out in college a lot and kind of getting into meditation. And then now I use an app called Insight Timer, which I have no affiliation with, but something you can definitely look into and try it yourself if you want to start getting into meditation. Something that's helped me out a lot since I was in college was just journaling, whether that be just listing out frustrations or emotional just struggles or even my to-do list. But uh, I find that journaling can help me just get a lot of my emotions out on paper. And it seems to mean more that way than, than me just kind of talking or thinking about it. My fifth tip is to get more regular exercise. In fact, uh, exercise is kind of my secret to success here on with YouTube videos. Normally, just being on camera stresses me out or I worry that these videos aren't gonna be very good, or that people aren't gonna like it. And you get this negative thoughts and cycle going through your head. And so I find that if I work out, before I shoot a video, I'm in a much better mood about things. Uh, I stop caring about all those like little kind of just junk thoughts. And so no joke, I'll often, uh, I work out probably twice a day, once in the morning and then once in the afternoon just to manage my stress levels. And then finally, the last thing that helps me is just taking long hot showers, uh, certainly after doing long exercises, uh, but being able to take a hot shower, it just relaxes me, I enjoy it. Uh, I'll do it for like 30 minutes. Otherwise, as always, if you are having stress, anxiety problems, talk with a local healthcare professional about it. And just know that if you are having a tough time in your life, going through a, a difficult chapter, uh, just know that you're not alone and that uh, being able to call out that you're having a tough time, that's okay. In fact, I think just recognizing that you're going through a tough time can help a lot. Just know that nobody is superhuman and that nobody really has it all together. I know I certainly don't. So I uh, understand that no matter what's going on, you have a friend here with me on this channel. And if you have any other questions about eyes, vision, other issues, let me know and certainly contact a local eye care professional. Otherwise, as always, thank you so much for sticking around toward the end. If you did enjoy this video and found value in it, hit that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Otherwise, keep an eye on it and we'll see you soon.